Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Purr's First Impressions. And on this season, we are recapping RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2, Episode 6. It, it is the Snatch Game, and I have the minty fresh, the beautiful, the New York City legend. It's Miss Peppermint, y'all. <laughs> hey, I girl. realize that you, you are my most, you're the most common guest I have on my YouTube page. I realize that now. I, I like that. I mean, it seems, it feels like we're together all the time. Um, I know, right? So I, I can't, I can't, you know, I'm not shocked with that statistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, Pip's like, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a lot. We've been really doing a lot together. I'm thinking of waning off. <laughs> We, we, ha, how dare you, darling? This is some good stuff. It's pure. Now, listen, y'all, <laughs> this episode, I, okay, I, I'm gonna, I know I've said it and I keep saying it and I just can't shut up about it. Drag Race I know what UK, you're gonna say. Season two is just so good. This is a fucking great, okay, first of all, full stop, pause, before we go any further than this. Listen right now. I know I look at my analytics. YouTube shows me everything y'all be doing out there. A lot of y'all are watching. You looky little one, but you have not subscribed to my page. It is free. Pause. Go down there. It's right. It's literally right there. Click subscribe. Click it. Wait. Let's click. Go, pause. Pause. One, two, three. Pause. And now they did. Okay. It. Oh, see, that was not so hard. Was it? That was. <laughs> that was literally so easy. <laughs> um, with that in mind, I just fucking love this season of Drag Race. It is just, I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. I fucking love this show. It's just, okay, so what well, real tea, have you, have you been watching the whole season? Do you mean to tell you the truth? <laughs> <laughs> ben, you don't even dance. I, I knew good and damn well you had not watched the whole season. Listen, you, listen, fine. listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. Okay. <laughs> I was not watching this season because I've been watching season 13. I can't, I, I didn't didn't have time to start it. I wanted to binge it. I wanted to binge the whole season at once. Yeah, And so I waited until last night to start watching. And uh, and so I watched the first, I watched, I started, I watched, I caught up. So here's the thing. So we're, we're, we're it's the Snatch Game. Full T, are you triggered? Wait. What? Yes. First of all, I there's a couple things I got to say. First of all, I am still like I think I've only seen RuPaul explode. Twice. I know that was last episode. Explode yeah. twice. Once during my season and once during this season with the uh, the no H and M thing and getting all crazy. Um, and I saw the meme online before I saw the episode, so I wasn't quite sure what the the context was. Um, Drag Race UK season two is definitely the most dramatic and like heart-stopping season probably of Drag Race ever because of the having to stop during coronavirus which yes. was triggering to me anyway like that like kind of brought back brought me back to March that day in March when we all found out we were going on the whole world was going on lockdown and then um RuPaul's you know very um spirited uh, <laughs> uh, commentary <laughs> on the runway on the first episode they return. And so that's so dramatic. So going into this episode, you're right. I It was like thrills and chills um, and spills. Could you imagine, first of all, could you imagine having the, I know everyone's going to say it's not a luxury, Bob, it's a pandemic, but also having seven months off to work on everything you were insecure about. Oh my God. You're right. Can you even imagine? No, I can't. I if I could, honey, I was waiting. Wait, I wanted seven hours. Yes. between our episode, they get seven months. Girl, we got home at at two, one a.m. and yes. had to be up and in the van at six a.m. Girl, that's not even seven hours before our runway. And so I, yes. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's terrible. And look. Like, it's very serious having to take that time off. Nobody you know, knew. We they did didn't it. even yeah, know if did. they were going to come back. Yeah. But once they found out that they were going to come back, even, a, even I'm sure they even gave them an extra week and said, we're going to come back. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they had some kind of notice. Even having that extra time in the notice definitely helped 
everyone's chances on the show, no matter who they are. Right? And now there's a lot of controversy. I can't believe that no one... Well, we'll get to the controversy. outlets later. We'll get to the okay, outlets okay, later. Okay, okay, okay. So here's well, my question. Well, okay, is but Dia I, the my, Yes, I what? am triggered. I'm yeah. triggered. <laughs> Smash game. I'm triggered. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it. I am triggered the hell. I'm tri the hell gird. Wait, that doesn't something doesn't sound right. Trigger, please. But I'm no, triggered. Well, we're, well, we're gonna talk about it, girl. Okay, so here's okay, the question: good. Is Tia the lip sync assassin of the season? Tia has sent home two girls, and she's the one. Now you were the official. You sent home Cynthia Lee Fontaine, Alexis Mate Alexis Michelle. Was it? Did you send anyone else home? Tr Trinity in the finale. Drag her. What? I mean, I did. She she was told to sashay away after I my did. lip sync. That's a sending home. <laughs> so, I, but the difference is I was not named. I mean, I did not self-proclaim that I'm any lip sync assassin. I've never done that. She RuPaul called me the lip sync assassin. That's the difference. Did, 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 did lip sync assassins start with you? No. Was that it term started on Drag Race before? Yes, it started with Chad Michaels, who who informed the other girls that they need to be careful on All Stars because she is a lip sync assassin. Oh my That's god, you the first time know I've ever the heard the history this. of lip sync assassin work. Don't ask me any other questions, though. I was like, that is shocking. I remember Pep Cop was like, "Bitch, I'm going on Drag Race. I ain't never watched this show. What the fuck?" <laughs> I found I that out doing? afterwards. I found That's that out. Wild. Somebody, I found that out afterwards. But yeah, it, it started with Chad Michaels and uh, the, the lip sync assassin. Every season didn't wasn't like didn't have a lip sync assassin of the season pr in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. That talk, st I think the first time I'd ever heard it used again after Chad Michaels was with me um, when RuPaul named me a lip sync assassin. Work. So here's a question about the blow. First of all, I went on H and M. The dress is sold out. So H and M should be thanking uh, Joe Black. For making that, I could not. I'm trying so hard to buy that dress. I think dress. the dress is gorgeous. They did. They do not sell it. It is fully sold out. I even went to uh, H&M Thailand. That was the only place I could find it, H &M and they Thailand. don't ship to America. They don't ship to America. This dress is. This dress is a hot. Wow, fucking that means commodity. the folks in Thailand are not watching UK's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> are they watching and Drag Race Thailand? <laughs> So, so here's the yeah. question is, does RuPaul, in your opinion, have a right to be mad? Because folks are, like, mad that she's mad. Is this justified? Mad to that she... Mad about what? About this fucking... RuPaul is, like, snapping about this dress. Is this justified at all to you? It seems like a little bit of a... Um, extreme reaction to clothing. <laughs> especially... <laughs> to clothing? Considering that, like, we're... <laughs> Like Ru, we're not on. Does we should we check this? We're in season third, a uh, season well, season technically season 15, 16, 17, 18, like 16, 17, uh, counting all of the seasons, right? 17, 18, maybe even 19. Um, nobody's making outfits like that anymore. The girls are coming with outfits that they got made for the most part. And yeah. so um I so I think that, you know, to 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 kind of to kind of clutch your pearls as if we're on, you know, a mayor, uh, a UK's next couturier is a little disingenuous, I think. She knows that people are getting these outfits. Now, off the rack is a little different than customer tailor made. You know, yeah. well, it's very different than customer tailor made. So I get that. Um, but I do want to, I do think that, you know, in the UK, in the middle, in the midst of, the lockdown, which is, I don't know how long they were actually, they said seven months, March, April, May, June, July. So they came back in July. Um, I, I, don't, I wasn't in the UK in July, but a lot of things were still shut down. I wouldn't be surprised if if, if um, they couldn't get uh, shipments of, of you mm -hmm. know, uh, fabric to the stores for the stores to open. You know what I mean? Things like that. And so the, I, I remember... It, affect, it affected the hair supply chain. If, I don't know if you remember. Like, it was a hot, tough to get wigs for a minute. Um, and so I think probably the places that were only able to really survive through the pandemic were the big box stores like in H&M. And so, yeah, maybe that was all she could get. So this is what Jenny Lemon said. Jenny Lemon said, screaming and swearing at desperate out-of-work queens for being too regional and unable to afford 
afford costumes after seven months of jobless despair. Nah, Bobs, I'm better off at home. Thank you very much. Um, so I have two thoughts here. One thought is like, I do agree it is Drag Race and everyone else found a way to make it happen. And, it's, and let me t this is something I think is important too. I think a lot of people think that Drag Race is about spending a lot of money or being incredibly expensive. And I think that Queens That's like... That's what the contestants think. I think Queens like Evie Oddly, uh, Sharon Needles, me, a lot of us have shown that you it's not about like spending a lot of money. Do I think that RuPaul's... Uh, Outburst was overzealous. Uh, it was a lot. That was it was there was a quite lot going spirited. Into, yeah, quite it, it spirited. Was, it, it, it was as it, if it. it was as if she was triggered just by H and M. Maybe she like you know had a bad experience at H and M once or something. It, I don't it, know. H and M uh, trying to buy advertising and being like, ooh, yes. Um, <laughs> Okay. I don't want to see no H&M. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't want to see, to quote Thorgy, I don't want to see no motherfucking H&M. Now, Lauren snakes Chaney, on a plane. Lauren okay, Cheney is the first UK girl to win three repeater badges in a row. I'm going to, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, even though she had a, she didn't have a great showing. This is Lawrence Cheney's season to lose. She is the one to beat. I'm saying that right now. I am not changing my mind at all. How do you feel about Lawrence Cheney? It kind of, I agree. I really do like Lawrence Cheney. Uh, I think that there's, it's interesting that there, that one thing that I admire about this whole season, girl, these girls can cry. I mean, we'll probably get into yeah. that a little bit later on, but honey, this is the most emotionally in touch uh, oh, yeah. and aware season I've ever seen. Uh, and I, you know, I don't mean to sound trite at all, um, but you know, this is, I often sat and wondered how last year the season might have played out if there weren't um, predatory behavior from uh, from one of the contestants. And I think that this is probably how <laughs> the season may have played out for that contestant. Um, yeah. And so I, I'm not that they're, I don't mean to compare them at all. I don't know either of them very well personally, but I'm, I'm just saying that like the level of skill and talent, comic skill and talent and camp um, and personality is there with both of those queens. Um, I can't even imagine you know, the and, scramble that uh, the the producers had to do to rewrite season twelve. I don't even want to imagine what they went through to re to restructure. Well, uh, we the whole talked to them. They were season. like they were cutting around that thing like they were making a exactly dress like, for like, a stegosaurus. like Dr. Pimple, like Dr. Pimple Popper girl <laughs> removing fucking cysts. Yes, I did. Um, <laughs> going around that lipoma. <laughs> Isn't that what she always removes from people's backs? Can I just okay. say real quick, Dr. Pimple Popper has gone to a dark place on the internet. It used to be like, oh, I'm scraping off some blackheads. She is doing full on. She's putting people under. She's like removing doing, children. Removing from limbs. She's like, it's just a C-section. <laughs> this isn't a pimple. <laughs> this is a C-section. <laughs> Dr. Pimple Popper, it's, it's, you've gone too far. It's too much. That's just my opinion. It is too much. Um, so, okay, what is up? I don't, okay, being a girl who was ragged on my season for my looks, let me tell you right now, when you were in the workroom and someone's making fun of your looks, I don't need everyone to pile on. So now at this point, Tace, Ahura, and now Ellie Diamond are all- On Tia. Just, they will not leave this girl alone. It's like, she's getting it on the yeah, main you stage. you know what? She's getting it in the workroom. She's getting it during critiques. She's like, she's getting it during their confessional when, when they don't even know. It's like, leave her the fuck alone. I think Lawrence, um, not okay, first of all, you're 100 percent right. Like they were, they were going after her way too much in the in the episode, um, and it seemed relentless. It seemed it it was it was one, two, or three comments too much, all, to the past the line of like normal um, kind of uh, you know banter between competitive queens to the point where it almost felt like there was something else behind it. That's right? what I'm saying. But I also really, um, I didn't, I don't love having, um, and we'll get into it, I guess, in this episode, Lawrence, because of, I can't say why, but Lawrence kind of um, giving a lot of unsolicited advice and sort of trying to like psychologically uncover girls' um, strategy you know, for them. Like, so mm -hmm. why are you going to do this? Like, I don't want to hear, no, don't Dr. Root these girls. Just go in the corner and fix your thing and <laughs> get ready. Go in the corner and fix your, fix your fucking wig before you try to uh, come over and analyze my shit. Um, 
<laughs> you know, I see that, but I, it, it, it definitely irks me, this notion that these girls... Because I remember, after being told about my makeup so many times, at one point, a girl mm-hmm. would sit there, and I'd be like, I get it, you think I'm ugly. I fucking get it. I know. You think I'm a dog. I fucking know. <laughs> what do you want? Like, well, girl, they do don't want, want to get they don't want to get lashed out at like Alexis Michelle did in my season when no one told her <laughs> what you know <laughs> no one warned her and then we all went to the cross. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one told me. None of y'all motherfuckers told me this dress was ugly. Did you knew that shit was ugly? Uh, okay, so it's um so let's talk about these characters for Snatch Game. So Rue's going okay, to the workroom, and it sounds like okay. Tase's character, who I'm not sure who it is, but it sounds like this character is even obscure to UK people because they were she was they were going back and forth with like, is this character well known? Is this person some people know? I a lot of these references are lost. I looked we, her we, up and she's white. That's all I know. She white. Yeah, I googled her too. But and I don't, this is the, probably the so first time in, I've ever in seen. In the comments, if you're from the UK, let us know. Is this person very well known? I think she should have gone with Dame Shirley Bassey, personally. I don't think so. Really? I think somebody tried to do... Didn't somebody try to do Shirley well, Bassey before? No, Shirley Bassey... So I, I, I mix them up. Mitch, Mitch, let me get that straight. So That's not Shirley Bassey. Yeah, no, Tia Coffey was choosing between Shirley Bassey and Scary Spice, Mel B. Yeah, I think yes. she should have gone with Shirley Bassey. Shirley Bassey just seems like a much more grand choice, the grandiosity of the singing. Maybe I don't know Mel B outside of the Spice Girls. Like, I don't know her outside of this group entity, but I do know, you know, Shirley Bassey in a big uh, drag queen organza taffeta coat singing, this is my life, you know? Well, this is probably the strategy. And of course, like, I'm giving my armchair, psych, you know, uh, 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 Snatch Games um, advice after having done so well. <laughs> but I think that... Um, to do Shirley Bassey is great for a performer who can really add um, improvise on their own. Somebody mm-hmm. who feels comfortable doing that. Because not a lot of people know a lot about Shirley Bassey. We know the names of the songs she sings, and we know she has this kind of bold, bombastic voice. And so mm-hmm. you could say anything and kind of be kind of, you know, kind exactly. of bougie sounding or, or, and do anything. So that's great for somebody who feels really confident. All I need to do is have this accent, and I'm good to go. But for someone who doesn't necessarily feel confident with that. Spice Girl, the Spice Girls, all of the Spice Girls, honestly, once you could probably do any Spice Girl and do a lot of the Spice Girl sayings, the name of the songs. And mm-hmm. if you're going to choose a character, one of the girls from the Spice Girls, uh, then you could like Scary Spice, who's arguably probably the most famous of all of them, um, or at least in terms of her isms. She's got a lot of isms that everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, her and Posh. And I, her and Posh have a lot of isms that everybody knows. I really do think that uh, it's a it's definitely a safer choice for people who don't feel that confident and who might feel like they're out in the middle of the ocean on their own having to, to improvise. And so if you're not yeah. comfy with imp- improv- improvisation, then, you know, um, the Spice Girl may be the best choice to go. But at the end of the day, you still got to be funny. And it just but Tia was- is good at improv too. She's so funny. Tia, t- typically speaking, Tia is a, she's one of the funniest people on the season. Like, top two. Her and Lawrence are the funniest In that girls. confessional, her confessionals are gold. On the runway. But you know what? On, you on the main stage, good? her runway was gold. You just said... Hmm? Her, like, on the runway when she was talking, not the look, but when she was talking back oh. and forth, in those <laughs> moments during critiques, she's just so funny. Not her look. Not okay, her look. okay. I think, <laughs> I think what you just said, two different things. Tia is good at doing improv. Is she comfortable doing improv? Those are two different mm, things. That's a good question. And I don't think she's comfortable doing improv. Yeah, I think and that a lot of people seems too to come have, across. Yeah, a lot of people do have a hard time. There's in between like being able to like think on your feet real quick and tell a joke and like being in mm-hmm. an improv scene. It is very yeah. hard for a lot of people to do. And Snatch Game is the ultimate improv scene, and you've got six, seven, or eight other partners. And it you lasts know, like it an is, hour. You don't realize and that it's you're, so, you're, it lasts. It's people think it's ten minutes. You're up there. You are exhausted, girl. We gone through every book, every joke <laughs> in the book. Yes, <laughs> and you were just sitting there just for an hour in you're character, searching, searching girl. constantly. What can I say? 
you're like ready. What can I say? What can I do? What right. can I look? Who's doing what? Right. She's saying something funny. Should I let her have her moment, or should I jump in and 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 steal the moment? Or am I going to be too shady by jumping in? Is it going to be good? Or are they going to say that that was a good job and you were in character? Literally, like, all, all this that. stuff. There was one where I did really well on Snatch Game, and there and Michelle was like, you know what? It was too much. And I was like, but I was I thought we were supposed to give it all. She was going, you're showboating, and I was like, bitch, what do you want from me, Michelle? What? <laughs> well, you want to do a good job or do you not? I mean, leave me alone. They just want to say the alone. opposite of whatever's happening. That's what, that's what I say. That's what I say. I love, I say, I say uh, one of the most famous quotes on RuPaul's Drag Race is, I'm going to have to disagree with Michelle. That's probably the most famous quote in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race. That's Ross's, Ross, to be I'm going to have to disagree with Michelle Matthews. Yes. Just um, contrary. All right, let me, let me go to the, uh, Okay, so Tia. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull up my uh, my my thing so I can now see. All right. So Tia Coffee chose Mel B, one of the Spice Girls. Ellie Diamond chose Vicky Pollard, who is a character played by Matt Lucas. Matt Lucas is the, I believe, the one with alopecia. Can you double check that, um, Jacob? The, he's, he's the bald comedian. Matt Lucas. Oh yeah, Luke, yeah. I, I didn't Britain. even get that until the end of the thing. But you're right. And then Lourdes Cheney played Miriam Margolis, Mark, who I kind of know of from like being like an old school actor and then doing like really kooky interviews. Like she's known for doing this one interview where she was like obsessed with ice cream. She's she's kind of like a, just a, mm. a, a nutty older lady who has a very popular, a uh, very like wide, like a very impressive resume. Yes, Jacob. I love ice cream. All right, here we go. So, uh, Bimini Bonbulash, which, by the way, th- Pep, do you not? That's the best name. It's, it's the best name on the show. It is such a fun name to say. It's definitely a challenging. <laughs> it's definitely a mouthful to say. Um, it definitely. Uh, you can tell there was a lot of. There's a lot of thought. That revolves around this name, I think. Queen of Diplomacy. I don't know what this. I don't know what this name means. I just love. You know why? Honestly, why I like it is because I feel British when I say Bimini Bamboulash. I feel it British. It definitely when I say is it. very British feeling, and I think it reminds me of like a. Um, is it a f- name of a food brand or something? I don't know. It's, it's, it's the way I feel. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't know. I have no context of this name. It's also the way I feel. I feel Australian when I say Kain. Or when I say Adelaide, like when I say Adelaide or the name Adelaide, Kane, I feel Australian. So I think that's why, as an American, I just love his name. Now, Ahura has chosen uh, Louis Spence, who I looked up because of this, and I just want to uh-huh. say, right, let's go. By, let's go through each one one by one. I think Tia Coffee did not do a good job. Mel B was a bad choice. The out, she didn't look like Mel B. When I think Mel B, the first thing I think is cheetah print. That's the first thing I think. First of all, I disagree. She, Mel B was a good choice, but she didn't execute it well. I think Mel it was B a bad is choice a for choice her. that has a plethora. This girl, what was she gonna do? She, I can guarantee you, if she had done, uh, J, um, who was Shirley that? Bassey. The other person. Shirley if she Bassey. had done Shirley Bassey, she would have worn the same thing, girl. Yeah, I think that was literally her. Because that I remember thinking that looks like that a was Shirley her Bassey game costume. Outfit. Yeah. I was like, that looks like a Shirley it, Bassey it, costume. It, it, it is. That's what I'm saying. So I think it, we we she was just going to switch the wig. I mean, that's what I'm suspecting based on the little clues that were in the edit. And so that Which being is a said, terrible I do plan. think Mel. It, that's the plan. It, you're, you 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 could have you could have chosen to do the best person every everybody's never seen a word about. Oh, but if you're going to wear that outfit and it's the same outfit you were going to wear for the last choice, then it, it's not a good approach to your. Your game. So she did a great choice with a poor execution. And, and just so you all know, we're assuming. We don't know that that was the same. We do not know for it just sure. It looks like she, it. We're assuming. Yes, Jacob. You're muted. Completely muted. I can hear muted. Jacob. My earrings really hurt. Okay, go ahead. Are they magnets? Yeah. They're magnets, don't, honey. Don't ever fuck with those magnets, girl. Don't. These magnets, honey, they're cutting off my bloodline for the rest of my generation. All right. So what I'm saying is I just think that for her, I mean, I think, honestly, I legit think that any person could be a great Snatch Game choice. I think for Tia Coffee, Mel B was a bad choice. And within that bad choice, she made some bad choices. (laughs) 
Because <laughs> also, Mel okay. B has like curly, crinkly hair, not an afro. Girl, it's not the cho- it's not the the toy the choice and the execution are two different things. There's a lot of people who made a really good choice. Why would why would a snatch game character be a good choice? A I snatch mean, game look, character is a good choice because her. it's someone that everyone knows and that it's so- someone that has a, a lot of isms, things about their personality that are available to do that are recognizable. Anyone a a, a, a white oh oh hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I got a delivery. <laughs> well, I'm going to grab a Here. beverage while you do that. Hello? Sorry, my, um, it's a delivery. He's coming up. It's Mitch. It's my, um, Mitch, it's my, um, it's my thing, Mitch. It's oh my, God, my delivery. Thing. It's my, <laughs> it's my, um. Thing. We my, get no, uh, no, say no more. We know the thing with the. Plastic part, and then the, it has the uh, the metal thing with the thing on it. Yes, but it's 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 my um. Uh, and you uh, use tripod. it to make your life easier. Shut up! It's my tripod. Hold on. Hello. You Welcome back to Pep Searches for the Words. On this week's episode, Pep forgets the word tripod. It has a in the three, and then you connect a. Welcome back to another episode of Pep Forgets the Word. This week, she forgets the word chair. You sit on it, and it has legs, and it, sometimes there's a cushion, not always. What are you talking about? Pep, we do not have time to do an unboxing. Wait, I'm fast. I'm fast. Look how fast I'm I am. I'm using this as a Patreon exclusive. Oh, it's a Polaroid. Exclusive. I'm using this as a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> it's a Polaroid. Look. <laughs> It's from Pep, it's Look, Oh my god, I'm so excited. It's a tripod, but listen, bitch. Listen, you're gonna gag. Look at this. Okay, Am I? You. It's a tripod. Yes. <laughs> with my, listen to my face. Listen. Here. Okay, watch. Here, I'm gonna show you. <gasps> oh my god. Mitch. Oh my God. Why is this? Ex- I don't, I, I okay. you don't understand what's going Mind your is- business. You told me to look. I, I, <laughs> okay, look. You told me I to look, look at it. I meant look. <laughs> because look, okay, wait, Jacob, how do I open this top hatch? Mm. Okay, shush. Sh- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, it did, it did. Oh Are my both these right now? Yeah, because listen. Oh my God, look at this! I've been so listening. Excited. You've not said anything. You told me to listen ten times. <laughs> Here I am. I'm screwing this in. I'm screwing this in. Baited breath and hook. Oh my God, it's screwing. Oh, I. Can't. I okay, fine. It's, I'll, I'll do it later. I'm so excited. Oh, Mitch, I'm this so is how high my, 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 tra- my laptop's going to be now. Oh, my God. Okay. Shh. Here, I'm going to take it down. I just want to celebrate. Oh, my gosh. And the feet have, like, some kind of, um, the feet, like, have a little, like, mix, Okay, Pep, we, Pep, we got to I'm get coming, I'm coming. Out. I'm putting the thing away right I'm coming. <laughs> I'm just putting it away. Can't you tell that I'm putting it away? Here I, it comes. No. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Quite frankly, <laughs> no, I can't. I'm putting it away. Can you just move the box? So I'm it sure. would be so. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Frank, did you know? Ca- did you know pork rinds have negative carbs in them? So negative that net carbs. Right. So there's there's like a, some carbs cancel out other carbs. They have negative. <laughs> so there's net like carbs. Corn. Okay, five, six, seven, eight. I got to turn. All right. So, okay. Now, Ellie Diamond has done um, mm-hmm. Matt Lucas as the character Vicky Pollard. Um, I, I am familiar with this because, um, so I don't know if you all know this or not, but HBO did a version of Little Britain called Little Britain USA, um, which I really mm. actually enjoyed. And they did the whole Peter Says Now and the lady with the talking dog. So I actually really enjoyed that that little rendition. So if, if you don't, if you're not familiar with 
Little Britain, you can go check out on HBO, Little Britain USA. Have you ever seen it? Mm. Have, you ever heard uh -uh. Have you ever heard Computer Says No or any of that kind of stuff? Computer Says No? Yeah, it's just like, so in, there's, a, there's a, like a, a stereotype that in the UK, secretaries and people who work at front desks are just mean. It's like the worst customer service, they're the worst. Mm -hmm. So it's just this grumpy receptionist who works at a front desk and she can't help you with anything. So you're like, I'm looking for my dog. And she just goes, she goes, can you help me with my Computer dog? Computer says goes, no. Computer says no. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Anyway, Lawrence Cheney does Mayor Margot. We talked about that already. Bimini Bamboo Labs does Kate, Katie Price. Do you? I know the name Katie Price, but I don't know a lot about her. Apparently, she's very much like Anna Nicole Smith, but without the drinking. Just yeah, but like, I was having a hard time figuring out because um, when I Google, first of all, let me just answer all the questions. I don't know who any of these damn people are. Okay, <laughs> that's the first thing. Second of all, when I googled all of them, I had to keep stopping the episode to Google everybody because I didn't know who the hell they were. Same. But I googled Katie Price, and I I was I was like, oh, is she trans? Because I was like, oh, she's trans. Now, I don't know if she's trans or not, but it, the w Google thinks that, sh or says that she's known by her other name, Jordan. And I don't understand w what that meant. Well, Jordan is but, an androgynous name, so who knows what that... Uh, well, Jacob, I mean, he, why is she known by this other name? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know much about Katie Price. I, I don't really know much going on, but I do know this. This is the funniest person on the dais. No one there is making me laugh harder than Bimini. No one. There was, I didn't care who Katie Price was. I almost didn't need to know who Katie Price was. She, Bimini, made me laugh so hard. I right? knew, I knew who Katie, that's, that's the thing. I knew who she was trying to be. I don't know who Katie Price really is. I don't know if it was accurate or not. I don't care. It was so, she established this character so mm -hmm. quickly and so securely. We didn't need anything else. All she had to do was, just do her thing, and it was it was wonderful, and I trusted everything she said. For Suddenly, sure. Suddenly, she's talking about she caught her horse cheating on her in a stable. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh! Now is that something offensive to Katie Price? I don't really know. Maybe she really did it. I don't really care. It was really good. She nailed it. And at the top, when she said, um, "the the nipples are the eyes of the soul," eyes of the face. No, 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 no. Or, or, the nipples she said, are. What? She said, "The nipples are the eyes of the face." That was what it was, yeah. That's exactly what she said. I rewound I like, it she's got, and I was, wrote it I was down. Like, she's got it. She's got it. She got she's, it. She got she's it. She's gonna fucking rock it. Okay, Tase is doing Jane Turner. I have no clue who Jane Turner is. I, I Googled her too. I was like... It looked like I, Richard Simmons. My first thought was, is this lady white? She must be white because this look is wild. And then I Googled her and she was a white lady. I don't know anything about her, but I do know that I think the judges were hyping her up. Because I did not, I was like, are the judges seeing something in this Snatch Game that I'm not seeing? Because this is not. You mean later on in the runway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they were like, you were just, I was like, it was, it was perfectly middle of the road for me. It was good. I mean, maybe it's because they know her very well, the, this teen, Tina, Jane Turner. Um, mm -hmm. I do think this is probably the first time that, uh, that a black contestant, and I don't really know how Tace identifies, but obviously a person of color, um, uh, has done somebody like a, a somebody a character so white. <laughs> wow, right in front of a me. Very Did you not forget my Carol Channing? No, 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 no. I remember one your Carol black. Channing, but you kind a of you're, you you. I'm okay. Let me tell you. Here, here it is. It's controversial. I think that the the piece that's the character that you're more memorable for is definitely doing Uzo. You know, well, yeah, I mean, I think that I think the absurdity of me being uh, of me being Carol Channing is what made it so wild because she's obviously not. I mean, she's one eighth black apparently, but that you didn't you, the, you doing Carol Channing. It was like the audacity and absurdity of you doing Carol Channing, but then you settled into a character that really settled home. I don't know if uh, the impression of you, of your performance in Snatch Game would have been the or the impact. The impact wouldn't have been the same had you just done Carol Channing. I agree. And this I case agree. just did. She, she she only did Jane. It's not like she did Jane Turner and then turn around and to, um, turn into you know Al Sharpton. She and you know the just fans are gonna go Jane off Turner. too if you if you get it right. I believe also Mariah Balenciaga did uh, um, uh, uh, Mummy Dearest. What's her name? Joan Crawford. 
Mariah Balenciaga oh, also did. Mariah Balenciaga also did Joe I didn't. Crawford. I don't know if I watched that season. Yeah. Of all um, the episodes I've ever seen. Yeah, got it. <laughs> now, Sister Sister is doing Psychic Sally, who I'm assuming is like a Walter Mercado, um, Miss Cleo, uh, Psychic Friends type person, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Or like a, t- t- uh, you know, Long Island medium type, but for the UK. A psychic. Yeah, I don't know anything about her, but also, I she was fine. I laughed a few times, but that was pretty much it. Yeah. And I think, so Aurora's doing Louis Spence, who is a British reality TV campy dance instructor who is, by the way, they were really, like, maybe I'm just not at with it on the judges. I thought that Aurora was the second best one there. I think it was Bimini and then Aurora. Aurora had good Aurora jokes. Aurora doing Louis Spence. I, I yes. agree. I agree. She had good bits. However. She had good jokes. She wasn't trying to overstep people. I was like, this is good and it's funny. How, however... Yeah, she definitely. I think she took the mo- the biggest risk. Michelle kind of alluded to that in the in the critique. Um, I do think that her, um, I think that her reveal, her outfit reveal, should have happened later on because she yeah. established like this. She established. I didn't know who Louis Spence was, and it, it's honestly they're not performing this for a, an, a, an international audience, or are they? Do they feel? Do you think that they're performing this? For Americans, no, or do you think that they're not sure? to me? Okay, this they're, seems they're specifically it. with, with okay. this choice. This so lineup, maybe this it seems wasn't too UK. soon, but it would have been great if they had, um, if she, if Bimini had, I mean, sorry, Ahura had, um, you know, just established this character as this like you know quirky gay guy, and then the, and then we find out later. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And on top of that, his outfit. I think that would have sold it. And when she did it at the very beginning in her first sentence, it kind of was like, oh, this is a guy who likes to sit around in a dress. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I just Drag kind me. of got lost, you know. <laughs> Drag me. <laughs> so I think the reveal could have come a little bit later on after I establishing agree. the character. Yeah. Okay, when RuPaul came out, I gagged. I'm not going to lie. I gagged. Because RuPaul never RuPaul shows her leg. Out. We got to go into the look. Oh, she has shown them a couple times, but you're right. I was like, oh, le-, like we notice it. I was like, oh, legs. It was very much. There was a. Um, it reminded me of another look of hers. I don't remember what the dress was. Not that she did before in a picture way before Drag Race, where her legs were showing. I know that was a very anticlimactic way to describe it. But. <laughs> there was once a picture <laughs> where RuPaul showed the leg. <laughs> That being said, also, <laughs> that being said, this shoe RuPaul is wearing is offensive. I do not like this shoe. I don't, oh, wait. I like, how do I get to the shoe? Hold on. Let me get just my... Just swipe back. down. Oh. I cannot with this shoe. Everything oh, else is my... so beautiful, though. Hold on. Let me get it. I got to use my grabber. <sighs> Sorry. Mitch, you have to put the grabber in the shot. In the, in the, in the... Don't put shit. Have you know we release unedited versions of these like in th- in six weeks no. or four weeks? <laughs> oh no! Don't do that. Okay, let me it's see. Ha- which one is it? Which one is it? It's the pe- oh these RuPaul shoes. You're right. The these first- shoes are a little like are a little like. It's not old what drag I would queen. From it's old drag yeah, queen. Not this what is your typical, old drag queens wear. This is like this is this is this is not what I would expect from RuPaul. It's it's a classic drag shoe. It's like. You, the first pair of stilettos that every queen has. It's it's very like it's a classic drag shoe. Is she wearing gold? Anywhere else? I, it would be great if it gold. I'm not gonna critique ear- RuPaul. It's earrings. not my favorite shoe. <laughs> but also, y'all don't realize people, people you never see RuPaul's shoes because she's wearing gowns. RuPaul is always wearing these the, the the classic drag shoe. It's like a clear cover over the foot and then a big old stripper Ask, shoe. Yeah. That is RuPaul's shoe. Blue sight. Mm-hmm. Um all right, so let's go into Ahura. Wow, this look is um, Ahura looks amazing. Oh, it was breathtaking. I was like, oh, it was good, right? Yeah, I, it's breathtaking. I can't, it's and the fact that it was three D printed. Um, I shook. I was shook. I was like, who oh. the fuck is three D printing their drag? Ahura. <laughs> Ahura is doing it, and Ahura is she did it like it's. I love it. It's great. It's sexy. It's, um, I do agree with the, uh, who, who's the, the guest judge's name? 
Uh, her name was J uh, well, Jesse w Jesse War. Jesse, I do agree with Jesse War. Jesse, J J can you double check that, that Jacob, um, please? Jesse, where? Where? I do agree with J the judge Jesse Ware that there was so much um, blocking the face and kind of obscuring the face that it kind of. Um, I, I think that we didn't need as much of the bones on the face, or maybe in a different way, to see a little bit of either a mouth or... I mean, there's not that many features on your face. It's like your eyes and your mouth are the most expressive parts. So one of those things would have been great to have. But I other than know. that... I liked it's a it. And I think that maybe for you and Jesse, because you and Jesse were being introduced to Aurora's face, the rest of us like, we know what your face looks like. Let's mix it up. I personally <laughs> love this. I like the 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 make that she made her legs look a little dirty. Her ass looks great. The hair, this this look is just it's good. It's right, great. I can't. I'm not going to. Um, I, I have. I'm not criticizing the look at all. It's wonderful. Like it's and it's so cus. It's like the definition of like custom. Yes. Let's talk about taste. Taste is doing this like uh voodoo priestess thing. Which, I, there's a part of me that's a little, and I've done a voodoo priestess moment in my life. Uh, I think I'm a little past that. Something about it seems a little inappropriate, if I'm being com completely honest. Um, and also, the panty part looked like she had puff paint on it, which was kind of annoying to me. Gold puff paint? No, it was like white puff paint. You know puff paint. We used to put it on our, our clothes. Oh, the bone parts? I know what puff paint is, but the bones? I'm, I'm trying no, it's like, to... There was like the a face, looks like... There was like a face on the front of the painting that kind of... Oh, yeah, I see, I see. like yeah, it was I done see. in puff paint. I was kind of like, I don't love that. Yeah. The look it might is have been. Fine. True. I think True. the look is good, but her performance uh, of the look sells it. She they, Her walk really, is mean. Her they were really acting like she was, they were acting like, she, there was a moment where I kept being like, Taste is doing well. Y'all acting like she just reinvented the drag. Like her snatch game was fine. Her look was <laughs> fine. Maybe they just, maybe something got left on the Girl, you know they floor. recorded this in the in the height of 2020. Summer 2020. <laughs> but they were harsh to other people, but everyone, but every time Taste came, they were like, girl, this is really, you fucking but, nailed I it. I mean, it's, it's. You're maybe on paper. You're right. Maybe on paper, it doesn't feel like the most captivating thing when you describe like a, she wore like a you know cave woman outfit and a and a thing. But her performance of it was her. She be, like there was no sep for me. There was no separation between like taste the per person and this drag entity. Like I believed what she was selling. She became this. You're calling a voodoo priestess, cave person, prehistoric whoever. She became that when when she was walking with that like I'm coming for you look in her eye. Mm. It sold. That's what sold it for me. It was the walk and the look in her face. I agree. And she that's did so, what she did, I think she did so. was was that was um that's what I'm saying was um not available for us with bit um Ahura's Ahura because because that thing was on her face. So now let's talk about sister, sister. Okay, Oof. I'm not My accusing. My earrings hurt, but I'm trying to make it through. <laughs> you're what hurt? You're, oh, sorry. I'm not accusing. My earrings hurt, but I'm sister, trying to make it through. Go ahead. I'm not accusing sister, sister of anything. All I'm saying is this: last week there were two bags of chips, and this week there are two uh, tiger print moments. Now, uh, I mean, I'm surprised that no one mentioned it because there was this thing like they were like, "Sister, we think you went home and uh, switched up the game, and were inspired by people." I don't know what you are watching at home. What do you think? Do you think this is just a coincidence? What do you think? I mean, we are talking about prehistoric cave woman garb. Like, what else are you gonna wear? It's gonna their skin is. They weren't making. They didn't have like you know, um, you know, chiffon back in those days. It's it was animal skin. That's what you had. Either either leather or animal print, right? I mean, only one of the girls wore this. This this looks a little bit like a combination of Lawrence and Ahura's outfits meshed into one garment. But also, there's what, a chance. What that slide are we on? What side? We're on uh, Sister Sister with the Beehive. Oh, okay. I mean, but thank you. I don't think that that's too. Um, I mean, look, okay, I think it's a reach. You know, if it's like you can do anything you want and then she comes out with the same look as the other girl, then that's one thing. But if they're like, it must be cave woman, 
you think of the Flintstones, you're not going to get very far before somebody's wearing tiger print. Okay, and well, so, what do y'all think below? Y'all at home, tell me what you think. Uh-huh. I will say this. If next week, Sister Sister is matching she someone again, we we need to have a chat. All right. Tia Coffee, we need to have a discussion. Where are these thousands of, di- of rhinestones? She said thousands of rhinestones. Tia Coffee Wait, said are there are... Okay. No, we're not. We're on. We're on the next one. Okay. Tia Coffee okay. said there are thousands of rhinestones on this outfit. I mean, I didn't see I, any of them. I. I mean, if you lean in, they're in like the. Va- we oh, all I mean. did that. She at the moment that she said there are thousands of rhinestones, and that that's what's giving the glamour. I know that simultaneously in different states, every single person watching this went leaned in <laughs> to see are there. I, I just feel like Tia Coffee might need just more time and more resources because yeah she came she came kind of pretty pr- okay I can't take it I can't take it I can't take it I don't oh. know, the, the, the magnets are the worst oh. it's the worst invention ever <gasps> Jesus <laughs> it's oh. the worst idea oh. if you, if you're in a pageant oh. for a second they're glamorous do not yeah for yeah oh my God look at my ears oh okay. Wait, it fell off. Your ear fell off. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, I feel like um, this look, and I love Tia Coffee, but, like, I got to be honest and objective. She just keeps falling, and she she thinks she's serving body, which is crazy to me. It, she seems to be, it seems as though she's got a propensity to remain conservative. With her drag looks. Because I've also noticed that all of her looks have gone below... Excuse me. Have, excuse me. Have gone below the knee. Like, you know... And maybe she's got a sense... Of, I don't know. I, it makes me wonder, is there a sensitivity with her height? Because I haven't heard anyone mention this. She's as tall as RuPaul. And she's really tall. When she first walked in, I was like, ooh, this girl... Is so tall. Yeah. And she obviously, we would, I think we would love to see her use that to her advantage. I don't think it would be like crazy for her to come out like in a bikini. You know, Naomi Smalls is very tall and thin and is not as afraid to wear like little, little skimpy things. And it looks great. It can, it can look great. Um, yeah. And so it does seem like she's, she's just got, she's in a zone that she can't get out of, which I can understand because you, you only have so much in you. Like, r- honestly, any any drag race contestant coming um, as one type of queen and then completely throwing everything out the window and just becoming a completely new person is a really, f- that's a tall order and not very likely yeah. to happen. Because you brought what you brought. I think it's more than modesty, though. It is taste. Like, it's not just the fact that, because, like, Lawrence Damn. Chaney is not wearing anything <laughs> slutty at all. But, it, but Lawrence Chaney's outfits look nice. Tia Coffee's outfits are just consistently pretty bad. As much as I love this queen, I just cannot get on board with this look. I just can't support it. I cannot support I it in any way. I can't comment on the outfits because I was never known for my outfits. So, You know, I wasn't either, but I can comment because this, this is my YouTube show. It's your show. Uh, so let's go <laughs> on to Bimini Bun Boolash. This, when she came out... And the and the she was pulsing her arms. I was in it immediately. I was immediate. I did not know what she was until she said it. But as soon as she said, "I'm a single cell organism," and those arms were pulsing, I was like, "I'm here for this." And at that moment, I was like, "I promise you." I knew she's gonna win from the snatch game, but when I saw this look, I was like, "There's no way she's not gonna win this episode." Yeah, it it's. I think it's. This is this is the what. I, I feel like you're about to say I, you don't like it. I'm so I'm like I'm per, per, I'm preparing myself. You know me. Um, I would never say something as simple as I don't like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I think that this could be similar. It could be in a similar case to to um, Tia, where uh, you said that you believe that Tia's choice of uh, Scary Spice was a bad idea, and I disagree yeah. with that. I think it was a great idea, but not the best execution. Um, and I think kind of the same way. 
the fact that she had to explain it so much from the beginning, from the time she was on that runway until the time she was talking to the... If she had said, I'm an ostrich, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> and so that's what I thought she was when, you know, birds are prehistoric and she's wearing feathers. And so it, you know, if she had said, I'm an ostrich, I believe it. Michelle thought she was a vagina. Like there, that's, that doesn't... And, 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 and a, a single cell organism... Like an amoeba is it makes sense. We didn't learn like humanity and the and and civilization. I don't think started with a with ba with bacteria. Oh, um, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Pep doesn't believe in evolution. Pep doesn't believe in evolution. Ever. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm playing fair. God. But I. But it was. I don't even know. I had to like stop and look up and see. Is that what a back? Is that what bacteria looks like with feathers on it? Um. And so I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a stretch. It, it's very it's very high concept, and it's such a great idea, and mm -hmm. it makes sense. And it's so far beyond, you know, to be something that's not human, something that's you know not even like a monster or a, like a, a dinosaur, something that we don't usually see is brilliant. I think the execution was good, but it needed so much explanation that it wasn't kind of like we see it and that's all and we understand it right away. And maybe unfortunately, I'm just, maybe I'm wrapped up in the Bimini mm -hmm. Bamboulash love, but like this is such a fucking serve. I can't even get like this looks like it should be on like fucking a runway somewhere. It was on a runway. She I actually looked up the uh <laughs> Oh, like a real runway. I thought you meant this runway. Yeah, no, no, not that. It was on a runway. Um, it was on a fashion runway. I looked up the designer um, who she referenced. Uh, let me see if I... Um, Jacob, can you... Uh, oh, Iris Van, Har Her Iris Van Herpen. Um, and I looked up the Iris Van Herpen show. Uh, and it was some very similar uh, textures and, and prints. There was nothing mm -hmm. that was as sort of abstract as this. But they were all very similar. I think that her... Um, the thing was the Iris Van Herpen show was was all more classic style silhouettes. Uh, and so having this type of um, fabric where that had the ruffles and the things like she had or like Bimini had works well to say that this is kind of an organism type of dress. But then mm -hmm. when you're dressing as an organism, using that fashion fabric felt a little, she, she tied, it, it relied more on the fashion and less on the costume aspect for me and it didn't and it didn't sell it as much so i was it was it was it was confusing for me i right. guess we have to agree to disagree Her performance this was great. fucking this sent me this served me this fucking served me down all right let's she move looks on to amazing. Lawrence Cheney. Okay, let's move fine. on to Lawrence Cheney. Lawrence Cheney is uh, okay i will say this and everyone on this everyone here knows i'm a Lawrence Cheney stan at this point i'm rooting for Lawrence Cheney this silhouette is getting a little bit predictable from miss Cheney. And uh, this does not feel particularly inspired. But she looks good. I agree. <laughs> You've never been this uh, short with your words, Pep. This is, this, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she looks good, but it's, 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 um, the ground's not broken. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I was, um, I will say, it was refreshing. Let me go to my little notes here. Um, it was refreshing for me to see uh, some, where is this? Where are my notes? Hold up. I'm sorry. Um, it was really refreshing to see Bimini, Tace, and... Um, Aura? Ohura give looks that were so unexpected and a lot of thought went into. Now, granted, um, oh, uh, mm. who was the amoeba or the bacteria? Bimini. Bimini's uh, look, I think, as I said before, had a lot of thought put into it, so much that we needed to be taken on a journey and kind of learn. Um, but... Those three did. If you said prehistoric, the first thing I think is Flintstones. The first thing mm -hmm. I think is a woman in a in an animal print dress with a bone in her head, mm -hmm. and that and and so to see some of the queens g divert from that was really refreshing. It would have been great 
if if most of the queens had diverted from that and tried to take us on a little bit more of a journey rather than just saying I'm a, a drag queen and here's my animal print dress. Um, yeah. Especially considering that to, to, to make this look any other type of look, all you would have to do is remove the stuff from, from Lawrence's teeth and take the bones out of people's hair and then it's just a regular animal yeah. print runway. Yeah. You know? So yes, I agree. It, yeah, I agree. And last but not least, we have Ellie Diamond, who's doing a grown-up version of Pebbles from the Flintstone, which you already said. And I mean, she does look good. I mean, she looks, she looks, she looks perfect. I don't, I would, I don't know that I would choose a. What uh, slide is this? The last one. I don't know that I would choose a knee-high patent leather boot uh, mm. in black to go with the look. I feel like the time period calls for more creams and oranges and browns mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. greens so the boot just seems like an afterthought to me but she looks perfectly fine yeah i think it yeah i agree it's it's it doesn't it doesn't it's not winning the runway but um and yeah. this the i guess this the club what is this club made of i don't know um <laughs> is that like a cutout flat club or is it actually like I, and I, I think tell. it was a I think it was a full sized club. Bath I, club. Okay. I don't know what the fuck it is. I it have looks no flat it on this picture. Um, yeah, I agree. It, the, the 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 dress, the animal print dresses were not my favorite. The three animal print dresses plus the. Um, can we? I, I have. Is Tia a bat? Tia's a pterodactyl. Oh. She's a dinosaur. I will say, in, in her defense, that does seem clear. I don't think it's great, but to me, it was pretty clear that she was a pterodactyl. I just thought, yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. Now, yeah, yeah, it does. It's it's true. It's true. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about a uh, couple of things real quick before we go back. Uh, okay. Okay. Why do you think, what do you think about comedy queens going into Snatch Game? Because sometimes they just flop. Sometimes a comedy queen goes in and just tanks at Snatch Game. What do well, you think I think about? it's what we said before. I think it's exactly what you, we said before and kind of a bit of what uh, Lawrence was mentioning is that, you know, if this is not a stand-up comedy routine, stand-up comedy routines, although um, many comics are good at uh, bouncing off of an audience or someone else who's plays the straight person in, in theater and comedy, the straight person is just, you know, someone who's not a part of the routine is just kind of has a normal reaction to everything. Um, and so I think comedy queens are good at playing off of straight people and are good at, you know, their routine, which is oftentimes written and well rehearsed yep. days, hours, weeks before they get on stage. That's different than improv. Improv, you just need to have a set of skills and you come into it and it's about having l as little preparation in terms of like the story as possible. You just, you know, you just go with it. And when you're, when you're bouncing off of RuPaul, the two guest judges, and six or seven other queens. That's 10 yeah. people. You it's know, lot. it's a lot to deal with. And so you keep, there's not a room for, for a whole script and a whole storyline and a whole arc and a whole, like, you just have to be the character and react in real time. I agree. Yeah. So I, I get, I mean, I, I was lucky enough that I am a comedy queen and, and it just happened to work out in my favor. Maybe that's from improv classes. Mm -hmm. I actually never took improv. I don't know why. It just worked out for me. And sometimes your nerves just get the best of you and you're fucked. That's another thing. Sometimes your nerves just get you and you're like, girl, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for me. Also, I really felt when Ellie Diamond, when RuPaul said, why are you getting so emotional? And Ellie Diamond just said, I don't know. Because that's where you get to at a certain point in Drag Race. Mm -hmm. It's about a little bit past halfway where people are like, what's the matter? You're like, bitch, I don't fucking know. I'm just an emotional yeah wreck right now i have no it's clue true. it brings I don't you know. it brings you there all the way there it's it's very understandable for her to say i'm crying about my twin brother you know rupaul why are you why are you crying it's because i'm my twin brother or you know i'm hungry and tired bitch like it could be either of those two things you know like bitch why were you screaming at us yesterday like, you don't Hello. know what about that what about that why are you so emotional why are you so emotional girl Screaming about H and M. Everybody knows what H and M is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the bottom two are uh, Lawrence Cheney and Tia Coffee. And for me, as soon as it started, I felt like there's no way before they even started playing. Before I even heard the song, I was like, I don't think Tia can survive a third one. I don't. I don't see it for her. I love her. 
I just and also I was shocked. Lawrence Cheney is a good lip syncer, and when she threw that girl, fucking when she big, when she did that um drag, and, I was like, oh, oh, girl. When Big Girl hit the ground, I said, that is. I mean, she's young, which is probably why she can throw. I cannot throw myself to the ground like that. My knees would explode, explode. My knees would explode <laughs> if I threw myself to the ground the way Ow, Lawrence Cheney threw herself visual. to the ground. But um, <laughs> Lawrence turned it out. I think that Lawrence deserved to win that lip sync. I think Tia even knew her time was up, too. And I think she left with grace and dignity. I agree. I don't think that there, there was a lot more that she, from the inside, would have had to show and give. I, I, I could tell that she was, you know, every, every single competitor on that show has an end to their emotional and kind of like, um, and to, to their energy that they can put into the show. It's not never ending. I know that people come in and say, I got, I can do it forever. But there is an end to kind of, that, that, that experience is very high stress, like we said. And it's not that sustainable. And everyone has a different limit. And then sometimes people, it's like the limitation of your skills, but you push through it. And then some mm -hmm. people, it's the limitation. You're like, you know, I am just done. We saw that with Jenny Lemon on the runway a few weeks yeah. ago. And so, like, I'm just done. And I think that's, um, I'm not saying that, that uh, Tia threw in the towel by any means. But I, I, I think that it was, like you said, I don't know how much more she would have been able to, to give knowing that there's also self-preservation involved. You just need to save your own mental, you know, you can't be someone else necessarily. That growth, you can't, someone can't force you to grow. And so, yeah. like you said, I think if she'd um, gotten cast a season or two after this um, with maybe some more resources, I think it, she would have a different game. I think she's one of those bitches that's gonna come back in All Stars and wreck hoes. and slay. I really see that for wreck. Tia, for Tia Coffee. Oh no, doubt. she's gonna. Okay, do you so think they're gonna, the are they gonna do an All Star? Okay, grab them. In the, they're in the little untucked area, and like this is this kind of bothers me. Lawrence is emotional, and I there's two sides to it. Lawrence is doing the best, and they're annoyed that Lawrence is sad about being in the bottom. But at the same time, your emotions are your fucking emotions. Bitch, if I'm sad right now, don't be like, well, you're doing fine. You don't get to be sad. Bitch, I'm fucking sad. Leave me the... I'm sad. Don't. I'm down, bitch. Don't kick me now. I don't think now. they were sad. Be, I don't think they were upset because Lawrence was emotional. It's not about your feelings. It's about your actions. And I think that they were just... Upset. I mean, you can be emotional and still read the room. You know, if if you're at a funeral, you can't be like, I'm the only one who feels sad. Like, you can't. You well, know? Lawrence didn't and say so, I'm the only one who feels sad. Lawrence said, I am sad. Right. And Ahura was like, well, you right. got three room pizza no, no, bags, I, love. I didn't say You'll that that's what Lawrence fine. said. I, I said, you can still read the room. And I can tell you, as someone who may have earned a title after the season, we, in our reunion of being a lip sync assassin, I never felt like a lip sync assassin during my season. Girl, even when I knew I was in the top or felt like I was in the top, I was, you would never see me in Untucked because I was, the minute we got into that room, I would go to the back and start rehearsing mm. the performance just in case, just in case there was a twist. And so... Well, I'm not sure the girls are, there, there seems to be, I can't, I can't say what it is, but there seems to be some sort of it looks like they're just annoyed that Lawrence is expressing her emotion, even though we know Lawrence is probably going to be safe. But we probably know that Lawrence is going to go very far. And I can see a bit of a thing where they're kind of like, well, Lawrence is doing great and whatever, whatever. And it seems like almost like Lawrence is not allowed to express her feelings in the same way that everyone else is. It could definitely come off that way. But you know what? When you're in a situation, um, it, they're, like optics never leave the room. Mm -hmm. Optics never leave the room. So if we both got robbed at gunpoint, but you're a millionaire and I'm, you know, poor, or if you've got three Rue Peter badges and I've got none, or if you have been performing really well and I've been in danger and every time or whatever, that, or if I've never, if I've not been recognized for the accomplishments that I feel like mm -hmm. I deserve in the thing, then then our reaction to that is going to be, it's, it can come off differently. You can both be upset. You can both be sad. You can both be mad that you're in the bottom, but there are sometimes, there was times when I was, when I was, it, it's the exact same thing as this. I, when I came in and had won a lip sync, I wanted to jump for joy and scream and holler and laugh and giggle and tee tee kaka. But the other girls were sad that another person got sent home. or so, so I would have to look around the room and be like, maybe, maybe I'll kind of take that into consideration. This is a competition and whether or not you like it, strategy is a part of it. And so when you decide to, 
it might be wise to look around and consider how other people are um, going to react when you trot out certain feelings or certain moments. Some people may be like, oh, you just cried because you're trying to get sympathy. That that's not that's not fair. But if they're the other people, girl, there could be a twist next next episode where they're like, the other queens get to decide who goes home. And then all of a sudden you might want to ba think back to what you said and did that may or may not have been as um, uh, considerate of the other girl's feelings. And that goes for everybody. Well, I, I, I agree with you there. Obviously, never leave the room. But I, I, I don't know that I would say it is. Well, you said be considerate of the other girl's feelings when going about your thing. I don't feel like it was uh, a lack of consideration for Lawrence to be like, I'm sad. I have no one else to talk to. You are the only people I can talk to. And I just want to say, I'm sad. And I'm crying. Mm -hmm. That's I, all. It, it, seemed, it seemed as though, it, it, the way it might have been the editing, but it seemed as though there was an opportunity for another girl to express her feelings, and that was an opportunity. The, the way that it played out in the edit, and all I know is I've, of what mm -hmm. we see in the edit, is that the time at which the reaction to her saying, I'm sad, came after, I think, someone else was about to express their feelings, and it seemed as though she took that space. And so, you know, I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see the full edit, but that's the way it was presented to us. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like she was in the corner and got hurt and all the girls rushed over and like, girl, what's wrong? I think it was like someone else was about to express their feelings and she took that opportunity to do it. I don't know if that's true, but that's the way it came off. And in that situation, it does feel less considerate of the other person. Yeah, we don't we don't know. We don't know what happened in the room at that uh, moment. We have no clue. Mm -hmm. Um so that being said, Tia Coffee is gone. It's it's a wrap. It's, it was time. I'm not shocked. Um, I'm so glad that Bimini Bamboulash has won this week's episode. She did such... She's on a roll now. She had two great weeks in a row. So I think I might That's have to character. change... I'm going to have to change my fucking top three now. You know, Bimini just <sighs> definitely... Bimini really... Per, per, I've been watching, I did I did scroll through some of the episodes, and I watched, um, Bimini seems to have a very effortless, I know it's, it's not effortless, but Bimini seems to be presenting a very effortless, sort of unshaken, unfazed mm -hmm. game in this season. Um, I remember sitting and watching both of these queens, Jenny Lemon and, and Bimini, who both say that they identify as non-binary, both with the same color yellow hair, um... Sitting across well, yellow is the non-binary color. Huh? Yellow is the non-binary color. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. Yellow. That, I mean, everyone I know. Hello. Okay. The point is that they're both sitting there, um, and there's a lot of similarities in, t in these two humans sitting across from each other, but their reaction to the circumstances was very different. Um, and, you know, whereas there was a moment or two that it seemed like Ginny Lemon was sort of shaken or sort of... Um, maybe a little bit knocked off of her, off of their game, you know, because of whatever was happening, it seems like Bimini just wasn't and seems unfazed and seems things seem to just roll off of Bimini really well. We don't see yeah. Bimini expressing and um, you know, a, a, an amount a crazy amount of sadness or like confusion or frustration. Bimini just seems to roll with it and 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 float. You know? Well, that might also be because Bimini's just doing better than Jenny Lemon was. Like, if you're doing well, mm -hmm. what well, like what does Bimini have to sweat about? Bimini is fucking killing it. She's been doing pretty great since the season started. She was coasting exactly. a little bit. Yeah, which is exactly my argument that could that thought could have rolled through the head of Lawrence. That same. But the, exact but the difference is Lawrence was in the bottom. That's what I'm saying. It's not like Lawrence was in the... It's different when a girl is safe and is like, I've wanted some critiques and there's someone in the bottom. Lawrence was in the bottom. She knew she was in the mm -hmm. bottom and she was sad about it. And I do agree when someone is like... With so, it's, let's say someone was in the top and they were like, I'm mad I didn't win and someone's in the bottom. That is inconsiderate. But if I'm like, bitch, I'm in the fucking bottom this week. Let me feel my fucking feelings. Let me feel this, you know? Anyway, um, Mitch... Mitch, I should do the um, I should do the the wrap up, and then I'll go back and do all the, the pickups, right, Mitch? Work. So let's give a what? shout out to our departed queen, Miss Tia Coffee. She has a brand new single out called Outside In, and I must say, the fashion she's serving on this cover photo is inspired. Where is it? 
listen, Pep, thank you so much for joining. Bitch, will you look at me? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm listening. I'm finding Tia Coffee's thing. Oh, shit. It's my editor. We won't yeah. be able to play it. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, Sorry. Uh, so, Pep, thank you so much for joining me on Purse First Impressions. I always love talking with you. Um, and thank you all so much for joining at home. Join us next week, and we will be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2, Episode 7. Buy my new album, A Girl Like Me, Letters to My Lovers. Oh, Pep, what do you <laughs> Pep, what do you have to um what do you have to promote? My new album, A Girl Like Me, Letters to My Lovers, it's out for streaming right now. You don't even have to buy it. You can just stream it for free. Um, and I got some new videos. So since you're on YouTube, please go bump up the views on my latest music videos. One with Lake Ashley and another one. It's a solo. Uh, every morning and will you still love me tomorrow? In fact, all of the links are below in the description. So go down there and check out Peppermint's work. She's absolutely iconic, an amazing musician, a brilliant performer, and my friend. I hate you. Oh yes, I would. And people can visit my little. And people can join my new Patreon, which is Peppermint Two Four Seven on Patreon, uh, for exclusive content of my Pep Talks Black Movie Classic show that comes out every single week. And Bob has been a guest once, twice, and will hopefully a third time very soon. 